Hi everyone, I'm Thomas from the Babylon Jazz team. Today we're doing the part four of our video series that takes us into the journey of creating an augmented reality portal in WebXR. Let's look at what we're going to do today. So I'm placing the portal, but what we're going to focus today is this occlusion effect where I can see through the portal of the scene. When I go behind, I see the real world, but when I see through it, I see the 3D scene. And um, the opposite, when I go into the 3D scene, when I'm going to um, look back and through the portal, I'm going to see the, through the real world and behind it, the 3D scene. This is kind of like uh, the thing we're going to do um, today. Let's look at the desktop. We're going to do everything on the desktop to understand this concept. We're, uh, you know, step by step, um, opening and veiling all the different unknowns. So there is no surprise and we'll put everything together in the, in the last, um, in the last videos. So this is about occlusion. This is the result of our, um, playground today. What I have is a big plane and behind it, I have a, what we could say a mini 3D scene, which is this wooden box, right? And when I get close to um, to this, then I don't see the plane. So we're going to want a big occluder, right? This plane is actually the occluder that has a hole in it. And, um, you know, I can see behind something that is even bigger, right? I can see the scene behind. And um, there is a variable that plays with its visibility. Uh, and when it's invisible, uh, I just looks like I, uh, I just see the box, right? I just see um, um, what's behind it. So it's really exactly what we want to do. The difference is that when it's invisible, uh, what will be rendered will be the real world um, around it. Let's look at the code to understand how to do this. So um, I'm starting with you know the things I need to see to know where I am. So a box and a sphere. And first thing is to create um, the two elements, um, the plane and a box. And I'm going to use CSG, Constructive Solid Geometries. It is um, a modeling technique that uses booleans to, um, to do intersection and unions uh, of solid forms, um, so of 3D solids. So in a nutshell, you can subtract, we're going to subtract from the plane um, the, um, the box, so we're gonna have a hole in it, right? So this, if I uncomment this piece of code here, you see I'm converting into CSG uh, my crown and my whole mesh. Uh, and then I'm doing the actual subtraction here. And then finally, I'm just um, converting back to mesh and I get my, uh, my occluder right at this, um, this line. The next line is to actually create a, um, you know, give some uh, material and getting rid of the initial um, two meshes because I don't need them anymore. And there we go. I have my plane with a hole, which we'll call the occluder uh, from now on. And I can see what's behind it, which is the, the sphere and, and the box. All right, let's add now a um, 3D world behind it. Um, so that's this wooden box here. Um, so it looks like I have achieved what I want, uh, except that now I don't want to see this plane, right? Um, so what happened if I play with its visibility uh, here in the rendering loop? I'm just, you know, playing with the value of the visibility. And you see, as, as it uh, becomes invisible, well, suddenly I see what's behind it. And that's what we'd expect, right? When something is hiding something, then we don't, it's not rendered. And when it's not visible, then what's behind it becomes uh, rendered, right? That's the behavior you'd expect from the engine. We want to play with this, right? And to play with this, we're going to use rendering group IDs. Um, so I'm putting the occluder here in a first group um, at the number zero. And the way rendering group ID works is they're kind of like layers uh, and they are render uh, one after each other, right? So the uh, number zero is the first one. And I'm putting um, the elements that I don't want to see into a higher number uh, in terms of rendering group ID. And, you know, next one is number one. Um, so that's how I separate those two, um, those two type of meshes, the occluder and all the other ones. And then um, just to make sure the occlusion works, uh, we, um, here we're, uh, we're ensuring that we don't clear the buffer. Um, so we have the occlusion uh, for the rendering group ID uh, number one. And, uh, and we're doing the opposite for the occluder number uh, zero. We're uh, making sure it's clear. Um, all right, so let's take a look at this now to see if um, this changes, right? I don't want to see um, this box uh, when it becomes invisible. And there we go. We're back to the initial thing. Uh, when it's invisible, it really, it is really 
the effect I want to have. So um, that's it for today. Uh, we learn how to do this uh, trick of occluder, how to use occluders to uh, display or not display and to hide some uh, different uh, meshes and elements. That's one of the key thing of the demo. And that's like a big, a big block, right? It's like uh, our last block. Now, in the next episode, we're going to start putting everything together. We have the portal. We know how to place it. We have the nice effect on the portal. And we know how to do the occlusion. Next step, bringing everything together in a, in a first version of the demo. See you in the next video. And as usual, look in the comments for the URLs uh, of this, um, th those playgrounds. Bye-bye. Uh,